Hi, I'm Niall from Gulfstream Boats. Today I want to show you a 2006 Bayliner 192 Cuddy. This boat is fitted with, uh, with the engine of choice, which is a Mercruiser 4.3 litre, 190 horsepower steering drive. It's in very nice condition throughout. The boat is a tuner from new example. It's got a nice spec, and this is a great little uh, all-rounder. Whether you want to go fishing, whether you want to do water sports, or just have a general day cruiser that you know you can have the option of spending a night on board as well. This uh, this Bayliner 192 is well worth a look. This 2006 model 192 was a huge upgrade from the the long-standing uh, Forerunner to it, which they finished out in 2005. The, although it's still only just over 19 feet long and 8 foot 6 inches wide, it's a very substantial boat. You get an idea of that whenever it's out sitting on the trailer here. It's a very, you know, it's got a nice deep cockpit, low set floor in the boat. It's got a self bailing deck. It's got a really good sized cuddy cabin for a 19 foot boat, but it's still nice and manageable to handle around the marina or for towing on the road. This one comes complete with a twin axle in dispension roller coaster road trailer. It's in very good condition and it's great for launching and recovering the boat. Um, and for you know, towing her to, to new cruising grounds and things. Um, I think you'll agree this one still looks bang up to date and um, condition wise it is, it is in very very nice condition. The gel coat on this boat still has a really good sort of factory shine to it both above and below the rub rail. There's no damage anywhere around the boat. Um, there might be a little fender marker too but um, we have given the boat a nice, a nice polish and stuff, so it's taken the vast majority of those out. The underlying gel is in phenomenal shape, really deep shine to it. A couple of very, very minor scuffs here that didn't come out with a polishing mop, but I mean, you have to be really close to see those. The rub rail all the way around the boat is pristine, unmarked. There's no impact damage anywhere on the boat. And, um, you know, it's, it's just cosmetically, the exterior is, uh, is in great shape. Just on the corner here, this port corner, there's one little mark. I can just about feel it with my nail here, but it's, um, again, the mop has taken the worst of that out. It's not, it hasn't had a hard knock, it's probably just like likely scraped something there. The rubber rail and all is perfect, and the top sides are, are in very good condition. Not all of these cutty cabin boats are the most well thought out designs in the world. They're not all, always very practical either. This one actually is a very practical little boat. One of the signs of this is this proper little anchor locker and uh, anchor roller set up here, which again is unusual on a little cutty boat. But decent sized anchor locker, anchor and ropes come with the boat. And this little roller means you, you know, it's handy to, to launch and retrieve an anchor. All the stainless steel work and everything from the bow rails to the cleats to the little um, nav light covers, everything's in very good condition that way on the boat. And again, coming down along the starboard side, the hull um, and the deck above and the rub rail are all in, uh, in really good shape. I, don't, I can't really find any real marks just to point out on this side at all. Um, and the corner here, this um, starboard corner of the boat is perfect, as is the little uh, swim platform. It's got a little offset um, swim step and a small platform for getting in and out of the water easily, whether you're swimming or, or doing water sports. Again, condition-wise across the transom, it's in really good shape. Like I said, the boat is fitted with a Mercruiser 4.3 litre uh, V6, 190 horsepower engine. It's pretty unusual. Most of the boats, most of the 192s that you tend to find advertised are fitted with the, um, with the cheaper 3 litre engine. And that was done mainly by dealers to try and keep the package price done, down. The, the 4.3 litre really, if you run, get out and have a run on one of these boats, I mean, although it's 19 foot, it is, it's a much bigger and heavier boat than the old 192 was. So it really does like to have that, that extra horsepower that comes with the 4.3 litre. Takes it up to 190 horsepower, and it means that even with a full load of people on board, the boat still gets on the plane easily. If you're pulling skiers and things, and water toys and wakeboards and stuff, you will be really glad that you've got that extra horsepower as well, just to give you, you know, the performance that you need to get, get skiers out of the water and stuff. This one's in really good, really good shape, and uh, it's fitted with this, this Alpha 1 stand drive leg, so again, it's in nice condition. The anodes are probably due to change um, for next season, but they're not too far gone, and thankfully they've, you know, they've preserved the, the stand drive. There's no corrosion on the actual stand drive itself. This is the original factory paint finish. It's in good shape. The propellers are in pretty good shape as well. Uh, the skeg is pretty much unmarked and all the little trim seals, the bellows and stuff, 
they're all in, in good condition. Um, and mechanically out here, it looks really good. Taking a look above the rub rail, we've got a central ski toe point here, a little stainless steel toe and eye, which is in perfect shape, and there's no cracks or anything around the gel behind it. We've got a stainless steel uh, fuel cap filler, and then we've got a nice high transom in this boat. So again, like I said, the, the cockpit floor is set nice and low. You feel very safe and secure in the boat, whether you're standing on the back, fishing out of it, or you know just sitting in those, those jump seats at the back of the boat, they, they're set nice and low. Um, but the, the actual, the top, the top of the gunnels is all molded with non-skid decking. So if you are stepping off from a pier or from a higher sort of wall, um, sea wall, you can quite easily and safely jump in and out of the boat there. Stepping on board this boat, the layout certainly isn't revolutionary, but it is, it's well proven, it's tried and tested. And it's a really good sized cockpit for a boat that's only 19 foot long. We've got really comfortable seating here for six adults. With the, the, the standard layout, which is the twin back-to-back -back, um, lounger seats on the port and starboard side. And then we've got two low set jump seats either side of the engine box there um, at the back. A couple of things you can do to, to change it up a little bit is you can pull these seats, these seat covers out, slot them in here, the seat bases, sorry. And on either side to make up a full width sun pad across the, the back of the, the back of the boat. So that's really good in conjunction with the cushion on top of the, the engine box. And then if you are, say you're fishing or whatever on board, you can easily pull these seats completely away. Give you good access then right up to the, the gunnels there on both sides of the, the engine box. We can also remove the, uh, the cushion from the top of the engine box as well. And that gives a nice flat surface to use as like a picnic table or a, a preparation area for you know preparing bait and stuff if you're fishing. We've got a couple of molded in cup holders here. There's more cup holders down in the gunnels and there's loads of storage all the way through the boat. We've got storage with behind these little nets here in the gunnels so you can slide stuff like you know fishing poles and dock lines and all sorts of stuff down in the sides. We've got these little cubby holes as well. Got a little bit of put in there. We've got another one on the, on the the starboard side and then we've got two big storage lockers underneath the floor and again you can use these for a variety of uses there's dock lines and fenders and stuff in here at the moment they're all lined and drained as well so you can use them as like a live well or a, or a bait well um, if you want to and, and everything's in good condition you know, all the clips are working well all the little gas assist struts and everything all working uh, really good so yeah, there's no shortage of storage anywhere throughout the boat. We've also got quick access storage on the, both of these lounger seats on uh, either side. And then you've got you know, loads, of, loads of room in the cuddy cabin too for getting bigger gear in out of the way. Condition wise, everything in the, in the cockpit is generally in pretty good shape. The upholstery um, is, is virtually unmarked. There's no real there's no real damages or tears or anything um, on, on any of the seats uh, and all the cushions are, are in nice condition as are these, these padded uh, gunnel panels and stuff like that. Um, all the catches and clips and everything are, are in good shape as well. The only thing I've really noticed is some of the button poppers, like the little button poppers come off here on the, on the cabin door stay. Um, some of the button poppers around the covers and stuff haven't you know, stood the test of time particularly well but it's a pretty minor sort of thing, it just needs like an afternoon to go through and, and change each of those. The boat has spent the last couple of seasons in, in salt water as well and those little button poppers are just notorious for not standing up to that sort of salty environment very well but everything else in the boat has weathered remarkably well. All the little, you know, these little stainless steel catches, the stainless steel hinges on the, the, uh, the, the, the hatch covers and stuff and um, the windscreen frame, it's an aluminium window as well so it's not susceptible to corrosion and it's in perfect condition the whole way around. So apart from those tiny little details, you generally wouldn't know that this, is a, this has been a saltwater boat and it is very, very nice condition. Sitting back here at the transom, you can, you can just see how, how snug these seats are. So the, you know, the, the actual, the gunnels come up to shoulder height virtually um, and you don't have to worry about sitting kids back here or anything. You know, it, you still feel safe and secure inside the boat. All the, hand, all the seats have conveniently placed handrails so you can hang on as well whenever you're underway. Um, but again, for a 19 foot boat, it's a great cockpit and 
you know, the whole family is going to feel safe and secure in, inside the boat. But you can see back here as well that the, um, the cockpit is fully lined and drains. It's self bailing so we've got two big bailers on the port and starboard sides of the, the cockpit here. So any water that finds its way on board will automatically drain overboard. That's a really good feature if you're used, planning on using the boat in the sea and also if you're going to keep it in the water it means that you know any water, if the, say you, the cover blows off in a storm doesn't mean the boat's going to fill up with water. We also have a, in addition to the electric bilge pump on board there's a, another manual bilge pump here, a little whale manual bilge pump so you, there's a little handle you can plug in there um, for bilging out the, any water that finds its way down into the, the lower flow, the lower bilge of the boat. It's a very good helm position on the boat and the first thing you notice whenever, whenever you sit behind the wheel is the height of the windscreen. You know, it comes up well above um, my head height and I've got a really clear, uh, really clear visibility through the screen so that gives great protection from the elements whenever you're out, even on a bad day. Um, you know, you're not going to get buffeted by the wind or, or be getting pelted with the rain in your face. So um, the actual helm itself is well laid out. It's got all the usual um, marine instrumentation here. We've got battery volts, uh, engine temperature, speedo, trim gauge, taco, oil pressure and the fuel gauge. The boat's also fitted with a, a GPS chart plotter fish finder unit. So it's a Navman track fish 6500. It's a really good quality unit. Um, it's preloaded with a charge for the UK and Ireland here and as you can see it's got the split, split screen chart plotter and the, the fish finder functionality as well. You can make the, the fish finder the full size of the screen and there's, there's lots of options you can play around with there. Um, the boat has a VHF radio which is mounted in the cabin as well for added safety and things and we've got a, a, a stereo or CD player, well, it's actually not a CD player, it's just a stereo with an audio input so you can plug in your iPod there. Um, so it's all working really well and it's easy to control from the, from the helm here. We've got a five position tilt steering wheel here. We've got um, all our switch gear for blower motor, build pump, um, accessory switches, nav lights, horn, and we've got a little 12 volt power outlet here as well at the helm. So everything that I can tell is in, is in good work and order. Um, the only thing that lets it down a little bit is just the sort of finish on the, the dash panel. It's starting to just around some of the screw holes these aren't the, the highest quality dash panels in the world and they're st starting to corrode a little bit around the screw holes but apart from that um, you know the little chrome bezels on the gauges and everything looks really good it's got a nice uh, sort of matte grey finish to the to the dash molding so it doesn't reflect on the windscreen even on sunny days um, and the helm seat's really good we've got a little recessed area here for the foot for your foot rest and the, the actual throttle lever itself is, is well positioned so you know this boat with that 190 horsepower engine you can, you know, it, it does have pretty spirited performance, you can throw it around through the turns and you know have a bit of fun with it and the, the helm position is well set up for keeping good control over it. In terms of the, uh, the actual condition, the mechanics and stuff, all the controls, you know the steering, we had the boat out in the water, it's running really well, jumps up on the plane quickly, it runs up to almost 50 miles an hour which is great performance from that 4.3 litre engine. Um, and all the controls were feeling really good. You know, the throttle and shift controls, they're nice and light. The steering controls are, are, are very good as well. It's power steering, obviously. And the engine's starting, first turn of the key. So mechanically, this is a, this is a very good boat. I've known the, the previous two owners. We sold it to the, the current owner, actually, a couple of years ago. He's been pretty religious about getting it serviced with us every year. And so it's been properly serviced and winterized and it's been stored indoors over the winter as well so that always makes a big difference to the longevity of a boat the look of it and you know the mechanical condition so um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good boat and definitely um, one of the better ones on the market engine access on this boat really couldn't be easier we've got a molded fiberglass engine box it just lifts on two gas assist struts without having to remove any seat cushions or anything and we've got really good service access in around this Mercruiser 4.3 litre motor. It's a turnkey start variant, so it's a, it, it's a carburetor but it's automatic uh, choke and, and start and enrichment. So just, you just turn the key to start it like your car. Um, and it runs really smoothly. Being a V6, uh, if you're moving up from a 3 litre or something, you're going to notice a huge, a huge improvement in refinement um, and you know, just general smoothness and performance very torquey motor, makes 190 horsepower, gives this boat a really good turn of speed, jumps up on the plane very quickly 
uh, and powers the boat up to, like I said, almost 50 miles an hour. So you got bags of performance for, you know, water sports or for getting home in a hurry or whatever. Condition-wise, it's, it's really quite good. There's some signs on the front pulleys of uh, little bits and pieces of corrosion, which is common on a on saltwater boats of this age. But the uh, the belt's in good shape. It's not shredding. There's no evidence of any belt dust in there, which is really good. The bilge is nice and clean and dry. I, like I said, I've I've known the boat for the last two or three years. It's always been reliable for the for the the two the two previous owners. Um, I'm just going to dip it for oil here to show you. The, uh, the condition of the oil so this hasn't been changed since the start of the season but you can see there the oil level is good for a start and it's nice and clean as well um, it is due to service before the start of next season but the, that oil is in good condition that's a good indicator um, of the uh, the condition of the engine itself the other fluid checkpoints that we have here are the gear gear loop um, for the stern drive the little monitor bottle there it's shown um, a good level there and then we've got power steering fluid just in beside the, the dipstick. Um, so all the, all the service checkpoints are um, nice and easy to, uh, to access. You can see we've got our trim fluid reservoir there on the, uh, on the transom with the trim motor mounted up out of the bills, which is good. You can see all the little pipe clips and fittings, all the transom fittings and things are all completely uh, corrosion free. So the only real evidence of corrosion is just those pulleys, and that's pretty typical. Whenever you get a little bit of salt water in the bilge, the pulleys sort of agitate, you know, create a bit of airflow around them, and they sort of whip up a little bit of a um, sort of salt water around them. But other than that, the engine's in really good shape, and like I said, it's running really good. So we're going to fire it up now, um, show you how it runs, and we're also going to put the boat through its paces in the water, so you can see exactly how she's performing.
Access out onto the, the foredeck of the boat is via these moulded-in steps here and this open and windscreen section. Again, everything's working really well. The hinge and all is in good, good shape. The, the stage for the windscreen, the surfaces are all moulded and on skid. And then, you know, we, we took a look at the, the anchor and set up out at the front, which is uh, very practical and, and, and very good. You could also probably throw a couple of uh, towels out down there for, for sunbathing and better, better weather, but um, it's good access out to the foredeck of the boat. We get into the cabin through the split folding door. Again, it's all working really well, apart from this little stay, which, is, which as I mentioned, it just needs a little button popper replaced there. But apart from that, it's all good. And um, in this surprisingly large cabin, I'm going to jump in there now to show you what the headroom and stuff's like, but it's a, for a 19 foot boat, it's a great little cabin. I've got full, full sitting headroom in here, even sort of, you know, halfway up along the length of this cabin. So you quite comfortably could sit two or three adults down in here if you had to, say if you were getting out of a a bad shower or whatever, or even as a place for kids to get in out of the elements during the day. This is a really good spacious cabin on a 19 foot boat. I mean, you just don't, I've seen 21 foot boats with worse cuddy cabins than this. So it's a real credit to Bayland of the sort of room that they managed to cram into this, this 19 foot hull. Um, the cabin's well appointed as well. It's nice, nice uh, finish on the upholstery. Condition wise, it, it's perfect. These little backrests here as well, you can see the way the backrests are, uh, are split into two sections. So these back sections, they slot out and they go in here to make up a filler, you know, filler piece for the, for the berth. So you can put those two cushions down in here. We've got this little support slides in there and then you can make this up into a, a double bed. And it's actually a pretty decent size. You could spend the night on board. You're not going to go away for, you know, for a week's holiday or, or anything, but for the odd overnight stay, um, a weekend away for a couple, or very small family, it, it's it's uh, it's ideal for that. The actual backrests themselves are, work very well. Whenever you're sitting in here, you know they're well positioned. They give give you good cushion behind your back. There's storage in behind them then as well, and we've also got storage underneath the underneath the seat cushions too. Taking a look underneath the cushions, you can see the sort of storage we've got. So the actual storage compartments, they're pretty decent size. All the carpets and everything's nice and dry. The the, uh, the little compartments underneath are all dry as well. Um, this is the little filler piece, the second filler piece for making up the V-berth. And again, another deep storage bin up here for, you know, you could store things that you don't have to get regular access to. But it's all dry, the carpets are dry, the headlining's dry, dry and in good shape. Um, we've got this little opening deck hatch here as well for a bit of natural light and ventilation and as a safety feature if you're staying in the cabin for emergency access. Um, and just, yeah, just generally speaking, everything's uh, in really good condition around here. So it's a, yeah, it's a really good cabin in this part of the world, particularly where the current owner uses the boat, where we're on the sea, around the north coast of Donegal. It's uh, just, it's a nice thing to have, just makes the boat feel more substantial, gives you more protection from the, el from the elements and um, just gives you more options whenever you're out on the water. This boat comes with a full set of camper covers which are in very good condition. If you check out the pictures um, at the bottom of the page, you'll see some, some, some uh, shots we have with the covers up in position. We take them off to do the video just so it gives better light and uh, so we can get a better look in the cockpit. The covers give you full standing headroom underneath them and they slope down at a pretty steep angle at the back so you don't lose uh, much headroom inside the cockpit. So whenever you've got those covers in position, you still get full use of the, uh, the entire cockpit of the boat whenever you're underway or if you're staying on board. So there you go, that's our 2006 Bayliner 192 Cuddy with the Mercruiser 4.3 litre 190 horsepower steering drive. The 192 is going to make a brilliant step up from a smaller bow rider or even as a first boat. It's a really manageable size but it does so many things very well. You know, it's a great all-rounder. This one is in very nice condition. The exterior still looks very striking, the gel coat's in fantastic shape, mechanically she's in very good order, the trailer is a top quality in dispension, twin axle roller coaster unit and the whole package is um, it's just very, it's, it's ideally you know, it's, what you, it's what you're looking for in, a, in, an, in an entry level cutty cabin boat. This one I know is going to give her next owners many years of, of trouble free use and if you're in the market for this type of boat I think you should really consider it um, closely. If you have any questions about the boat or you'd like to arrange to come and have a look at it, please don't hesitate to get in touch. 
just give me a call or drop me an email or fill out the callback request form on the website and I'll give you a call at a time that's uh, convenient for you. Thank you very much for watching.